Hey guys, back again with uh, another quick video. Uh, this is going to be just a real quick breakdown uh, and tutorial on how to uh, change an ignition, ignition switch in a uh, 98 to, I guess it would be 2004 Cadillac Seville um, STS or SLS. This is, uh, this is an STS. I've had the same problem with this car before about seven or eight years ago. I'm going out on a limb and assuming that it's the same issue again, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, about seven or eight years ago, the, this car, it, it started to just randomly die on me. It would uh, just quit when I was going down the road. The gauges would go all crazy. Uh, it would start back up and then the, the the needles in the dash would go all weird and the lights would come on and it was throwing like every single code that it could possibly throw. Um, back then I did a little reading and research and stuff and determined that uh, it was probably the ignition switch. Wasn't 100% sure at that time either, but I bought one, put it in, and uh, it fixed it. Every Every issue was gone with it. And it ran fine for a couple more years. I stopped driving the car and let it sit for quite a few years. And then when I got it back out from letting it sit, it uh, it needed a couple brake lines and fuel line and stuff like that. So I got all that fixed on it and uh, said, okay, well, it's been sitting a while. I got all that done. I might as well start driving it. So I drove it for about a week or so. Uh, the beginning of this summer, about three or four months ago, and all seemed well. It was running great. Um, it was driving it around town for, like I said, about a week or something close to that. And I had to go pick my buddy up at the airport one day, so I took this, and I made it all the way to the airport, about a 45-minute drive, and almost all the way back, like literally about five minutes away from, from town here that I live in. And it did the same thing that it did before, except this time it just, it would not start again. I hit the off ramp to a uh, stop at a gas station. And when I hit the off ramp, all of a sudden I lost my power steering. I looked at the dash and the tack was sitting on zero and the car died. I managed to coast it into the gas station parking lot and, uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't start again it would just crank and crank and crank and crank the uh, gauges went a little bit funny the security light kept coming on on it and uh, this time it, it would not start again no matter what I did I had to end up getting the car towed back here so I just sort of parked it in my backyard here and I forgot about it for about the last four months and I determined that I have to do something with it because snow's on the way and I use this back part of my yard here beside my garage to push my snow when I plow and it's right in my way so I have to try to figure something out with it um, the car doesn't have very many kilometers on it like a hundred and twenty some thousand or something like that and the since I replaced the ignition switch about seven or eight years ago that this ignition switch here would probably only have about three or four thousand kilometers on it but these cars are notorious for electrical gremlins and almost 90 percent of the electrical gremlins caused in these cars is this ignition switch because of the the voltage apparently that goes through it for all the uh the bose amp and uh all the other you know at the time high-end electrical electrical in this car it all travels through this ignition switch so i'm just going out on a limb and hoping that that's the problem again with it this time the only other thing it could be is a bad ground or the computer possibly flaked out usually that's not the case computers don't generally flake out in anything really so i didn't really get any video of um of t taking everything apart the only reason I picked up the camera here and decided to do the just this quick little video is I at this point in time I can only find one other video on YouTube showing how to change the switch in this and this video here the guy 
saying you have to take a knife and cut this part of your dash out and a bunch of stuff so i just wanted to throw this up here to just show that you know that's not necessary at all um you start by taking the that console piece off and then there's two bolts or one bolt up here and two bolts down at the bottom to take your uh head unit or navigation unit and heater controls out and the switch bolts up into there and there's where your cylinder would be all you do is just put your key in and there's a little little lock button right there and you put a screwdriver in there turn your key to run pull that right out which leaves this back inside and then you just got to fight with this a little bit get the bracket out of there and then pull this out and your whole assembly comes out and the last thing i need to do here now is just disconnect that uh that's your park shift lock cable in the back and then the switch can come out of there so i know I, it's not a very detailed video of how to do it but it does show that you know the only at the time i did it seven or eight years ago like i just fought with this for about a half hour to get this out and i didn't think it would be that big of a deal because i've done it already i went on all data and i have all data i use that that was pretty much useless it's saying you gotta hit drop the steering column and get down up underneath the bolster you don't have to get under there at all you can take this entire switch out from just in your uh, cavity for your stereo and getting in in behind there it is a bit of a fight but i had forgotten how to do it because it had been so long since i'd done it and i went on a couple cadillac forums trying to find possibly the information i used the first time and i couldn't find very much on there at all so then i went to youtube and i couldn't remember if the last time i did this if i used a youtube video to figure out how to do it or what but there's as far as i can tell for this you know generation and body style of car there's only one video showing how to change it and like i said that guy like he's saying you you cut this out and pry this back to get that out um you don't have to mangle your car up he doesn't necessarily say you have to do that it's just what he wanted to do because it was his car and he didn't care but i mean that's not really the proper way to do it like i said it's just you get your stereo out and you'll see that there's a bolt there there's a bolt there there's two bolts in the front one on the top and the bottom and all data and this other video say you got to have some sort of a bent wrench to get up in there to get those out you don't you just got to get the bracket loose and once you get the bracket loose on this you can shove this around about three or four inches in either direction you can pull it down far enough to get it lined up that you can get a, an extension and a socket there and an extension and a socket down to the bottom pull those two bolts out and then your bracket your bracket will come off i don't know what i did with that oh right there so there's a bracket attached to this thing which sits up in here that holds your cylinder in and you just got to get the those two bolts right there those two holes on the left and right will be right there and right there you get that shoved back far enough you can you can get a a socket it's 10 millimeter on that and on that take those out fight your bracket out of there off the the switch itself and then you're left with the the switch just hanging and then just have the shift cable there to take off and then you can disassemble all this and get your switch out so you don't have to get down under there to get it out you don't have to get in beside the steering column like all data and gm states you have to and you don't have to cut this at all you can get the whole thing out without mangling anything from just inside here and getting your two front bolts out from in there without having to get a wrench in through there to get at them it is possible to do but so I just figured I'd pick the camera up and at least just show that you know you can get it out without having to do those things and I'm sorry I didn't get any of the footage of actually removing it but like I said it's just pretty straightforward it's a few bolts and if anybody's watching this video and needs to change an ignition switch in one of these cars and has a question well how do I do this because it's not in in your video or whatever you just leave a comment and uh, I can get back to you and try to help you out get through it all right guys thanks